Hey everyone, this is what we will make in this tutorial. So I had this quick idea while I was working on the course videos. Yeah, I know the course isn't out yet and some of you guys have been waiting for it. So it will be out soon. Just kind of not getting much time these days with the client work and all. So anyway, let's start and see how can we make this. So as usual, I'm going to start by adding a new comp and call it a name. Anything you want. 1920 by 1080 and uh, let's go with 24 fps for the moment and 10 seconds should be good for the video and hit okay when you're done and here i have a few photoshop files you don't have to have photoshop files you can simply have some photos and that should be good so basically what i did here is i took an image and cut it out into parts so i have the table part separated after that what I will do now is somewhat align this cutout part and lower down the quality as well. And let's name them as main. The other one as table. Then control shift C to pre-compose it and call it table with fire. Make sure this option is selected and hit OK. Double click to navigate to this composition put a stock footage of a flame then put unmult effect from maxon red giant you don't have to do that it just helps in getting the flame isolated from the background put it behind the table after that put in any kind of warp effect this isn't necessary to do you don't have to do that but i think it just looks good it gives a sense of wind movement to the flame Now what you have to do is duplicate this use and put it above the image and mask out a small part of it. Go under the mask, I will tweak the feather of this. After that you can put a fast blow effect to it. You can put a Gaussian blow effect as well. Any of these that works for you, I'm gonna put a fast blow effect. It will help you get that blooming effect for the flame. Turn down the opacity, I think. I think 100% should be good. After that, simply you just you can just take the fire particles and do the exact same thing that you did with the flame. So this is just an additional detail, it just looks nice. Adjust the feather to blend it with the flame. That's how it looks. And one thing when you are working with long videos, sometimes you have to have animated clips or sections between them. So this is where the sponsor of this video comes in, Auto AE. It's an online template based animation tool which makes it quite easy to get Adobe After Effects like animated clips but without using After Effects. Simply pick a template, for example I like this one, customize it, add some text and pick some photos if you want. You can add a logo as well. And when you are done, hit preview. So be sure to check it out at autoae.online from the description of this video. And you should be good. Once again, same stuff. I will put another, another stock video of a flame I found on the internet. Just to keep a little variation between the flame. So one thing you will notice on this flame that this flame is kinda too sharp to look at so the best thing to do the simplest thing to do to fix this is to put an hls effect to it tweak the hue wheel and lower down the lightness and saturation until it fits with the overall video this is how it looks if we look at it back and forth before and after of the effect then let's head back to the main comp let's put a flame on this uh, i don't know what it is is it called 
at the back of it same thing again just make it tiny and make it fit with this boxy thing and if it looks too sharp as on in comparison with the uh, whole image you can do the same hls effect with it okay now let's move to the text using the text tool i will add, type anything it doesn't have to make sense let's make it solo so we can only see this and not get distracted by anything okay then open the text menu like this under the animate property you have to pick let's say position and blur effect and then opacity and then open the advanced section pick a shape and each low value will be 100% and each high value will be about 30 to 40% add a key for offset make it 100% and move it forward and then make the value to negative 100% and then tweak the value of position, opacity and other effects that you have applied. And this is how it should look like once you play it. Okay, it looks good to me. And then I will turn it off like this. And actually, I'm gonna apply a mask while the layer is selected. Any shape tool and make a mask like this. Mask like this. This part is optional, you don't have to do that. But if you can do it, it will get a nice detail to it. So add a key for mask path and move it back and then move the mask a bit down so it cuts the text like this it will give the burning effect let's move them back a tiny bit and then duplicate this and move it below and now what you have to do, you have to select the mask of the bottom layer and make it a bit up so you get this tiny black outline and then duplicate it once again. Delete all the mask keys and adjust the mask like this. And then add new keys for the mask. Make it slowly go up. Then hit F9 to easy ease it. And using the anchor point tool, I will put this at the bottom of this. So whatever the movement I apply on the scale will initiate from this anchor point. Then I'm going to open scale and add a key and move it back and match it with the mask like this. Then unlink the scale so we can tweak them individually and tweak the other value so it becomes tall like this and then pick a different color if, if you want and lastly i will put a rough and edges effect to it i will keep it at default so you don't have to get into too much detail for this add some keys for the offset to kind of mimic a movement of a flame i'm not looking forward to nail this effect i'm just i just want to keep it simple because i want the main focus to be the scene not the text effect and then duplicate it once again, delete the mask and then, then type something else move it at the bottom and then pick another font I kinda like this font, I've been using it quite a lot it's called Balto or Balto, I don't know how to pronounce it but yeah, you can just see the name and let's place it at the bottom of it so this is how it looks when I turn on all the things, let's enable 3D options on all the layers and right click and add a camera and while the camera layer is still selected on the search so here you have to type depth of field and turn it off because at this point I don't want to get too much into the depth of field effect if 
it feels like we can do that afterwards but for now i just want to set up the scene and not get into too much unnecessary details if i want to move the text as a whole not one by one what i can do is add a null call it text and make it 3d and then attach all the text to this null so when you move this null all the text that is attached to it is gonna move with it it just saves time so here i'm just moving the text a little bit forward move the cutout part of a bit forward as well so basically it will be like first the text then in the middle it will be the cutout part and at the back of everything it will be the main image itself quick tip if you want to look at your object from a different angle what you can do is hit c on your keyboard to activate the orbiting tool and using it you can move it and this only works when you are still in the custom view not in the main view And now let's head back to our active view. And I think it scaled up quite a bit. So I will just turn down the opacity for the main image just so I can move the cutout part like this. Like this. And see if it needs some scaling down. And one thing you can notice that when I cut it out, I didn't cut it quite nicely. So it doesn't blend well. So simply simple fix for this is to add a mask on the cutout part and add some feather to it so we can blend it and adjust it and now let's add a new null object this null object will be used to move the camera itself enable the 3d option on this null as well and then attach the camera to this null object now we just have to do the simple stuff using the position of the null object. Add a key, move it forward and then, then put some value in the Z axis and X axis, X axis as well. Just to give it some simple zoom out movement. And if you feel like that your movement doesn't have much depth, you can simply pull the images further from the main object. After doing this, when you head back to the main view, you will see that your objects has been scaled up quite a bit. So it's nothing to be worried about. You can just scale them again, scale them down and move them in the X and Y axis position. Now I'm just adding some more points to the mask because I felt it was not smooth enough. So just to, it's just a little thing. When we play it, it should look like this. So as you can see, the text is not being visible until it gets to the end. So this is where we can use the null that we made for the text and scale it down. So we can get the text in the view as well. And I think, I think we should move the text a bit forward like this. Just so we can see the animation that we added to the text. And then I'm going to select the text with the null and pre-compose it. Actually, you shouldn't pre-compose until you are done with all the text. But since I don't have much text, so I'm just going to do it anyway. When it is done, it's not going to get affected by the camera. So I will just push this icon, this tiny icon. Now let's add a deep glue effect to the text and copy my settings. Add another adjustment. I will put a transform effect to it. 
and add some keys to the rotation, anchor point, and lastly, scale. Move them forward like this. Then go back in the timeline and put some values in this. Hit F9 to easy ease. Add another adjustment. I'm gonna call it film and put a film damage effect to it. In this you can just copy my settings, it's not too complex. The shake is I think a lot. So I'm just gonna turn it off and so I can add it afterwards. Okay, let's add another adjustment, call it vignette and put a CC vignette effect to it. And this effect is pretty simple, you can just play with the amount and the angle of view and you should be good. Actually let's head back to the film damage effect and enable the shade option as well on this. I kinda like how it looks now with the yellow shade. After that when you are done with this you can, since we don't have a spokesperson video on this, you can simply go to the composition settings, turn the FPS down to 15. In my opinion it gives a cinematic look to the footage. I almost forgot about the shake effect so let's head back to the transform effect. While holding ALT on my keyboard, I'm going to click the stopwatch next to the position and then type this little code. When you play and see it, you can actually feel it. So let me just pull up the value so we can see what is happening. So this is what is happening. So now that we know what's happening, we can turn it back to 1. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed and it was worth your time. I will update back about the course. It's not completed yet but it will be out soon. So just stick with me on this and uh, hopefully I will be able to teach you a lot of cool stuff in there. See you in the course.